there's been a dramatic decline in the summer sea ice around the North Pole. And Newsnight's been there to witness it with a team on board Britain's biggest polar research ship, the James Clark Ross. The Northwest Passage, the famous sea route linking the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans across Canada, is now free of ice and passable to ordinary ships. The James Clark Ross sailed from Portland and Dorset to the island of Svalbard in the Arctic Circle. Our science editor Susan Watts joined the team studying Arctic ecosystems, tiny plant and animal life which provide an early warning of what could be in store for the rest of us. Ago, this was the domain of the whalers, explorers and the military and all the research was focused around that. Now the climate scientists have taken over because this is the fastest changing part of the planet. But they've got a huge amount of catching up to do. At the end of July, Newsnight's adopted scientists were in Portland Harbour, about to leave for the Arctic. Today, we catch up with them and they're not going anywhere. They're stuck in the ice, deliberately, north of Svalbard, kingdom of the ice bears in fiction. In fact, a cluster of islands halfway between Norway and the North Pole. Ray Leakey is principal scientist on the trip. Working on sea ice is never easy. It's got a whole variety of logistical and scientific problems. One of the first problems, we've got to be safe. We've got to look out for polar bears, and we've had quite a team of observers up on our bridge, on top of the ship, looking out sort of 24-7 whenever we're working out on the ice. Two of the scientists are on permanent bear duty. They're armed and will shoot to kill if the usual scare tactics don't work. The bears are at the top of the food chain. But Eleanor Bell starts at the bottom, counting bacteria and viruses. Other scientists in the team are looking at phytoplankton, the tiny plant life of the ocean, and zooplankton, tiny animals, all part of the carbon cycle of the Arctic they're trying to understand. Oh, we've got something. It looks like an excellent sample. Eleanor, along with Ray, has been a regular blogger, updating us on the trip on the Newsnight website. If someone had been For our third blogger, Henrik, this is all new. I didn't expect the, the, the ice to be so dynamic and to move so quickly and, and uh, change so rapidly. Um, and also the, the fact that the ice was so far uh, close to Svalbard, which it didn't, gave us very little room to work because our plan was to go north of Svalbard. And the ice has been perhaps the biggest puzzle. After all, this five-week trip was named the Ice Chaser mission. Yet the team bumped into it almost as soon as they reached the northernmost tip of Svalbard. This wasn't too much of a problem for the ship, as the captain explains. Uh, she's ice strengthened, um, which means she's got a good strong hull uh, capable of going through ice. The belt around the middle of the ship, around the water line, above and below the water, is uh, that's extra thick, that's over one inch thick uh, polar Rayex steel. Her design was to be capable of two knots in uh, one metre thick first year ice and I think she actually outperforms that um, so she's a, a pretty good build. But on the other side of the Arctic Ocean there's a very different picture. The 2008 season now the Northwest Passage is, is ice free so uh, a non-ice class vessel could, uh, could make it through the Northwest Passage. Okay, what we've this got is Jeremy is Wilkinson, the ice expert and, uh, at the Scottish uh, team's well, base in Oban. Recently, we've found the ice in the Arctic is retreating much, much more. And last year, which in 2007, was a minimum ice year that's ever been seen in the Arctic. And essentially, we lost the Arctic ice in this area here. So in one season, all the ice in the Arctic melted from here. And we're finding a similar thing happening this year in 2008. At present, we're not quite at the 2007 minimum, but we've still got another couple of weeks of melting, and it's quite possible that we may exceed the 2007 minimum. 
So why was the ice so far south where we were when the Arctic ice looks like it could retreat to a new record low? We went to arguably the best place to find out. Here in the world's most northerly university, they specialise in Arctic research with very well-equipped stores and special cold labs. You need more than a white coat to work here. Some of these labs are kept at 20 degrees below freezing to preserve samples. Frank Nielsen explained that what's been seen in the Arctic this year matches predictions for summers with less ice across the Arctic region as a whole. Uh, when we have less ice in the Arctic Ocean, um, the, it's much easier to move the ice around. And we have uh, strong um, pressure patterns in the Arctic which control the wind systems here. And uh, the trend this spring especially uh, gave us a uh, wind from the north, pushing the whole ice sheet towards the, the uh, Svalbard and the European side of the Arctic. So more ice near Svalbard doesn't mean that climate change isn't happening. On the contrary, it's part of a pattern of greater regional variability within the Arctic that scientists have been expecting to see. All this could change the life of the creatures living here, something researchers know surprisingly little about. After leaving its northern outpost on the ice, the ship continued back down to the polar research base at Nyarlison, which is where I joined the scientists. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is a unique research village with nine nations, including Norway, Japan, France, India, South Korea and the UK, each represented by a colourful wooden building, arranged in a circle like consular wagons circled against attack. All the science here is very young. It began in the 1970s here at the Nyarlison research base with geological expeditions funded by the oil companies. At about the same time, we developed microscopes powerful enough to see bacteria and filters like this one fine enough to pick out viruses. And with that came the realization that all our oceans, including the Arctic, are teeming with these tiny microbes. What have we got here? We've got melt pools, OK? And in some places, even at the most northerly point of the trip, the scientists were able to spot this microbial life. What you can see are these little brown particles and patches. They're actually little clumps of microalgae, um, single-celled marine plants which kind of clump together and grow in a colony. So we have an example here of microbes which are actually visible to the naked eye. Um, Having said that, there's an awful lot more single cells living in that particular environment. We just can't see them. But at least here, you do get a chance to see that there is life in this otherwise hostile environment.